Hello, I'm Armin Budish. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, your house could be wired to keep you well. We'll open the door to the technology of the smart house. Then, wish you had a bulletin board to post your reminder notes, phone numbers, and family pictures. We'll post the steps to build one that's beautiful. We'll send you to school in style with a grade A smile. Plus, making travel plans? We've mapped out what you need to know before you go. And we'll tell you about a Medicaid law that's just not fair. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for golden opportunities. The high tech world is here to stay. The only question for us is, are we ready to take advantage of all the benefits technology can offer? Elaine Kuhl is heading up a technology project at Breckenridge Village, not-for-profit retirement community, and she's here to help us gaze into the future to try and determine how technology can help us as we get older. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Armin, for having me. So, We've seen tremendous advances in technology, Elaine, and uh, you know, in all areas, cordless phones, you know, mobile phones, and adaptive aids, emergency response system, GPS can tell us where to go, I need it in my car. What's been occurring in the area of uh, aging, in the area of technology as it impacts older people? Well, pretty much everyone's pretty familiar with the pendants that we can wear, and if we fall and get hurt, we can push the button. That's where technology has gone to. Uh, back in the day, it was hardwired in phones and older technology. Now it's internet-based, so you can be sitting in your living room, be able to log in and see where technology is and how things are going with a resident. And I understand that there are uh, things that can be used now to monitor how a person actually physically is doing and feeling from a long distance. Tell me about that. The, the example would be how we monitor our car when we're driving. We can see how someone is doing by tools of using the monitoring devices. When you're driving in your car, you'll get the, the check engine light. You have low oil pressure. You have low tire pressure. Your fuel gauge is low. We're able to monitor the residents by monitoring their regular patterns. We can see a change in it and be able to maybe predict what could happen in the future if they have a change with their medication or with their sleeping patterns. Can you actually monitor their heart rate and their blood pressure and cholesterol and all those kind of things long distance? There's, there's a, a lot of different devices that they can. We can monitor what their heart rate is. We can monitor their body temperature. We can monitor when they're getting up during the night, how many times they're getting up. And wow. if you're settled and you're sleeping longer and getting longer times of sleep, you're able to interpret that you're probably getting a deeper sleep, that you're getting a better quality sleep. Wow. That when you're getting up and you're having issues with getting up, that usually there's a break in that pattern. That's when we become alerted that there's possibly a change that's going to be occurring. Now, there's active and passive uh, monitoring. What's the difference? Well, the active one was what we talked about earlier, which is when we push that alarm button, immediately there's a response, there's a concern, there's a medical need, I've fallen, you get that immediate. Passive is more what we're looking at now with being able to monitor someone's well-being, but doing it with monitoring their physical environment and monitoring them as a person physically with the things around them. Diabetes is a problem as we get older. Is there any way to monitor what a person's doing and maybe even control it from a long distance? We'd be able to monitor because some people have systems where you can be able to check your blood sugar and be able to monitor it, but they can also known, notice a change in patterns. Some of the systems will allow you to, to notice when the refrigerator is being opened and closed, when their pills are being taken, because a lot of the diabetics, it's knowing that they're getting their three square meals a day and that their medication is being taken in a timely manner. And by able to monitor that, we can know whether they are doing those things or not. So from your own home, if you have these uh, monitoring systems, uh, you can have somebody, a nurse, a doctor, a social worker, actually watching how a person's physically doing from another location. Exactly. The way we have the system set up that we're using at Breckenridge Village, we have eight different units that we monitor, and we have social workers, 
the housing managers and the nurses all monitoring and checking that daily and the computer recognizes any kind of change in their trending pattern and would be able to notify you and you'd be able to then follow up to find out what the change is. Can you put a GPS on someone so if they wander away you can it's find It's really out great for are? someone who has a cognitive issue. You have a monitor at the door and when they break that beam they know the door's been opened and then it has a lot of the units have a GPS on it. We can then exactly locate where the person has gone. That's great. Thank you so much for keeping us up to date. This is fabulous. Well, my thanks to Eileen Cool for joining us today. If you would like a free copy of uh, a booklet, Thoughts on Retirement, uh, it's really helpful. Just call the number that's coming up next. For more information, call Breckenridge Village at 440-942-4342 or log on to www.breckenridgeohio.org. Next, crafting a pin-free place to post what's important. But first, this pioneer explored our uncharted frontier with nary a fear and without any navigation system. This led him to share a personal discovery. I can't say I was ever lost, but I was bewildered once for three days. Can you track down the name of this traveler? We'll point you in the right direction when we return. Welcome to Breckenridge Village, a continuing care retirement community conveniently located in historic Willoughby, Ohio. Whether it's a luxury apartment, a spacious ranch home, or newly built brownstones, it's all here. With the added security of knowing more care is available when you need it. Breckenridge Village offers an exciting and upbeat lifestyle. And the food is fabulous. And our staff makes you their number one priority. Learn more about Breckenridge Village and come see our new Veal Wellness and Aquatic Center. Frontiersman Daniel Boone carved his wilderness road through the Cumberland Gap, but at least once he had a gap in his sense of direction. Still, his adventurous trails blazed the way for settling the states of Kentucky and Virginia. As our memories start to slow down a bit, we sure can use reminders. Maybe you stick notes on the fridge or your desk. Maybe a good place for reminders is good old-fashioned bulletin board. Karen Corvington's here to show us how to create a more attractive memo board that's not just your grandma's old bulletin board. Karen's with Pat Contans uh, in West Akron. Thanks for joining us today. It's great to be here. So uh, tell us, what are all these things that look like, some of them look like picture frames, uh, they look like, uh, they don't look like the old bulletin boards. No, and what's really, this time of year is great with the kids going back to school, whether it's your grandkids or your kids, is making it kind of fun for their work environment at home. They're going to have lots of homework. There's more things on their schedules, soccer practice, all those things. Okay. So this way you can make it into a crafting idea. With these, we just have, it's a frame, but it's metal, and you can take any kind of scrapbooking paper, okay. and you just cut it down to size, slide it right down in here, and then what I've done is I matched up with the scrapbooking paper a 3D stickers. Let's see if we can show our audience what these look like. Okay. And what do you do with the stickers? Now what I did was I just um, glued a, a magnet onto it and there you go. And you can, you're all ready to put your little notes, your little reminders and it also makes the desk look nice. And Very for good. the kids they can do the Google eyes and then you can also then have a matching pencil box. Well, let's show this here. with. I got one with little monkeys all over it. And that's just using the foamy stickers Oop. and just regular um, card stock. And then they can have a place for all their markers and all their little um, notes. Over here is just a regular uh, Bolton board. And what I've done is I covered it in uh, material and then you just crisscross with the ribbons. Does it come with that cute picture of that baby in case yours isn't so cute? That one's mine, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, that, that one's, because that's a cute one. Yep, that's my little Olivia. <laughs> so this way you don't have to use the pins. So that if, when you do have little ones, sometimes using the, um, the pins is dangerous. You don't want them laying around. So this way you can just tuck your little notes right in here. Well, if you have a picture, you don't want a hole in it if you can avoid it. Exactly. So here you stick it in there and no holes. And then again, the kids can have fun making their own um, 
uh, bulletin boards here I've taken Google eyes and they just get to it's, there's no rhyme or reason to it but it's just something fun that they can do so that their work area is more fun so you can actually sit with your grandchild and make this make board. this board you know you buy it as a cork board but uh, you stick the Google eyes on yourself. that's right and then you can also we've got the um, self adhesive chalkboards. So this one, all I did is I peeled it off, I put these little palm palms around it, added it to the um, Bolton board, and then of course some little fluff because, you know, girls seem to like the fluff. Yep, that looks good. Anything else? We you just have a short little time left here. But yep. You got all like I said, with all the boxes, show. we've got the felty. What stickers. are the boxes for when we're talking about? Uh, well, they can put their boards. they can put their markers. They can put their crayons for the bulletin board. You can put your equipment for the bulletin board right there to make your desk a nice little area so that the kids are they see what they've done. It's a more comfortable atmosphere for them while they're doing their homework. Reminders right. of the and of, you can get all this stuff at Pacatans or. Other yes. art supplies, studio exactly. places. Great. It says, just be creative. Sounds good. Thank you again for Thank all you. your creative help. You won't get bored looking at these boards. They make a great place to stick a reminder to watch Golden Opportunities every Sunday. My thanks to Karen Corvington for sharing her noteworthy ideas with us. To learn more, call Pat Catan in West Akron at 330-836-5600 or click to www.patcatan.com. Next, easy lessons to improve your smile. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. Looking to make sure your assets stay all in the family? Your own family, that is. Then plan to attend a free seminar presented by the law offices of Butish, Solomon, Steiner, and Peck. Just choose the best date and location for you. Monday, September 19th at 7 p.m. at the Holiday Inn at Rockside. Tuesday, September 20th at 3 p.m. at 23240 Chagrin Boulevard in Beechwood. Wednesday, September 21st at 3 p.m. at the Middleburg Heights Community Center or at 7 p.m. at the Westlake Recreation Center. To reserve your space, call toll-free 888-236-5173. Even if you're well beyond graduation, the beginning of the school year can bring a fresh start. Are you ready for a lesson in looking your best? Well, dentist and today teacher Steve Marsh is here to call class to order as he schools us in how to get a grade A smile. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Thanks, Armin. It's fun for me because my mom was a teacher and my dad was a dentist, so uh, hopefully I'm uh, doing what they would like. Very good. It's a loss to the kids that you became a dentist. No, no, I'm happy to be doing what I can do. <laughs> All right, so some of our viewers have children uh, heading back to class, and you want to add to their list of school supplies. What's that about? Well, you know, just a modest thing. Um, many kids go to school, they play sports, and today women as well as men. And so oftentimes we'll make them a custom mouth guard. Um, there are things that you see, the boil and bite ones, and these we actually take in the office. We do an impression of it, and then we're able to make this custom fitted mouth guard. It gives them a little better protection protection when they're playing sports. And I also would t encourage your viewers to maybe include a toothbrush and toothpaste as well. Sounds good. And uh, picture day at school, we want to look good. We always want to look good. And you know, one of the things we work with is uh, a lot of teachers. And it's a good time for teachers to get started. It's the beginning of the school year. Uh, their schedules may not be as busy. In fact, we start every morning at 7 a.m. Sometimes they come in and, and move on their day. Uh, and the other thing is uh, many people have insurance. Teachers have a few months left before the end of the year, and it's a wonderful time if they're going to look at uh, doing some remakes or remodels. Uh, your last uh, guest mentioned about creativity. We can be creative in the office and help them with their smile and help them maximize their insurance as well. And you mentioned teachers and, and others. You've worked with uh, a lot of uh, teachers, I know. Um, uh, tell us about some of the things you've been able to do for them. Well, thanks, and this gives me a chance to focus on them, and it's, I think it's wonderful as a back-to-school segment, if you will. Sounds so, good. This, um, this was actually a student, and this student came to me, um, actually, Armin, in the last month. She's actually going to Miami of Ohio as a freshman, and um, actually my alma mater. And when she came to me, she had these spaces. She actually had braces, but she had those small laterals. And uh, we had a couple weeks to do this, and she wanted to make a good impression on her new friends. And so we did just some whitening and then some bonding to give her that beautiful smile, a little gum contouring as well. 
And I have to tell you, she said she feels so much more confident going to school. Wow. Now this is a teacher who uh, came to us and actually was a great viewer of Golden Opportunity. She was retiring. Um, as a kid, she had braces and her smile was in and she said, you know, I'm, I'm about to retire. I want to have a beautiful smile going into retirement. And uh, Sarah was a lovely person and we did actually eight porcelain veneers on her to bring that smile out. Her teeth were back and uh, she chose the color she wanted and we gave her that beautiful smile. Another teacher, and what's, uh, she teaches elementary school. She had come to me, she said she never smiled for obvious reasons. She had decay and periodontal problems. And Armin, we did something very simply in about six weeks, we were able to make a partial that goes in and out. But the wonderful thing is she's now confident about her smile. Uh, at some point we may look into implants, but those are those new partials we've talked about that have no metal at all and gave her a beautiful smile. And I was, I was really proud of her that she shared it with us. It's hard to believe that that was the same person. Yeah, and, and thank you. And the last patient, another teacher who, again, heading into retirement, she had had some dental work done years ago with old porcelain on metal crowns. She said, I hear about that wonderful new porcelain and wanted a bright smile. Again, interestingly, you know, heading into retirement, her whole life she took care of her family and the other students and made them uh, most uh, important in her life. And now it was time to take care of herself. So uh, we were glad. It was gratifying to be able to help her. It's nice that you're able to do something for the teachers. Thanks a lot, Steve. My pleasure, Armin. For this subject, don't worry if you didn't take notes. You can always give Steve a call and quiz him about how to bring your smile to the head of the class. We'll be back. See what Dr. Stephen Marsh can do for your smile by calling 440-461-1003 or visit www.clevelandsmiles.com. Next, packing for a problem-free trip. It's time to get up and go. An exercise minute on golden opportunities. Hello, I'm Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness, and today we are going to do an extension diagonal to work our rotator cuff muscles. This is a great exercise because our rotator cuff muscles allow our arms to move in all different directions. All right, Armand, we got our bands. You ready to go? I'm ready. All right, we're going to grab the band. We're going to hold our left hand at our left hip. We're going to place our right fist on our left knee. Keeping your arm as straight as possible, we're simply bringing it across the body, up, and squeezing the shoulder blade in. Return it slowly. One more time, bring it up across the body and even with the side of your body. All right, let's switch sides and try. Well, man got away from you there. If I, no, if I leave it all uncurled, it's a lot easier this way. <laughs> yeah, slow and steady. 12 to 15 repetitions, two to three times a week. And now it's your turn I to get up and go. I can just hold it. <laughs> for your copy of the exercise booklet, please send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities. 23240 Chagrin Boulevard, Suite 450, Beachwood, Ohio, 44122. For some, September means back to work and school, but it's also a perfect time to study and book your travel plans. Whether you're looking to learn firsthand about history, shopping, dining, or sailing, Carol Schneider has a course of action for you. Carol is a travel agent and the owner of Cleveland Travel. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me on it. So tell us, what's a city that's easy to get to that we may not usually consider? It's Baltimore. Baltimore, okay. This is a, Why? This is a city that you can easily drive to or fly to from Cleveland. And you can enjoy the many sights of the city or you can use it as a port to enjoy a cruise to the Bahamas. You can take a cruise to the Bahamas from Baltimore. I thought you had to go to Florida or someplace south to, to get that kind of a cruise. Not anymore. Royal Caribbean and Carnival now have several cruises that sail from Baltimore to Bermuda, the Bahamas, and the Caribbean. Since there's further to go, are they more expensive? They are very competitively priced. Hmm. Uh, like any cruise, it depends on the type of accommodations you select, the number of days you cruise, and the time of year you go. Um, at this time of year, we might want to see uh, fall fo foliage instead of sandy beaches. Do you have any advice there? Oh, I sure do. Uh, Royal Caribbean's Enchantment of the Seas has a Canada and New England fall foliage cruise. What is this we're looking at? Okay, this is the deck of the Enchantment of the Seas. Mm. Looks, Looks beautiful, yeah. And that would be the promenade. And 
This sails from Baltimore on September 8th, September 22nd, and October 6th for nine nights. While there is still some availability, these sailings are so popular that many of the discounts are already sold out. Now currently, prices for 2011 in an interior stateroom start at $1,149 for September 8th, $1,049 for September 22nd, and $899 per person for October 6th. What if we, uh, I mean, your idea about going to Baltimore was nice. What if we want to stay, stay in Baltimore? Is there anything to do there? Oh, there's lots to do. Um, American Cruise Lines offers cruises around Chesapeake Bay and down the intracoastal waterways. Now, these are smaller ships, approximately 100 passengers, and they can visit ports and explore shallow waters where big cruise ships cannot go. Is this one of the smaller ships you're talking about? Absolutely. Okay. And they can cruise around Baltimore, basically. They, they these cruise around Chesapeake Bay, and they do um, what they call a Mid-Atlantic Inland Passage Cruise, which goes from Baltimore to Charleston. Oh. And it stops in Annapolis, Yorktown, Norfolk, Kitty Hawk, Wilmington, and Myrtle Beach. Well, not all of our viewers are seafaring folk. Uh, is there anything to do in Baltimore for us landlubbers? <laughs> oh, you, yes, indeed. Baltimore is one of the world's oldest seaports and one of the newest vacation destinations. Uh, Baltimore's Inner Harbor is a newly developed area. It's surrounded by many hotels, wonderful, wonderful museums and restaurants. And especially, I've enjoyed the restaurants there. <laughs> oh, good. So and also, I. isn't that where the aquarium is? Absolutely. That's the wonderful beautiful. National Aquarium. You walk right to it. Lots of things to do there, and I uh, appreciate your great information today. Thank you for joining us. Well, you're entirely welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm ready to pack my bag. How about you? For your ticket to a great trip, give Carol a call. Her number's up next. Find out more by calling Cleveland Travel at 440-808-9301 or visit their website at www.clevelandtravel.com. Next, a Medicaid rule that's unfair for couples. We're Gateway Title, keeping life simple. We can make it simple, we've got everything you need. See how easy selling your home can be. We're Gateway Title. Simple. If you missed any phone numbers or websites from today's guests, get a pen and paper now because we're going to list all of that information again. And then I'll be back to answer and reveal how one part of Medicaid doesn't work for some couples. One spouse must enter a nursing home, the stay-at-home spouse is given some very important protections under the Medicaid law. For example, they can keep the home in up to about $110,000. But are there any similar protections for same-sex partners who have been living together? Here to explain whether the rules are the same is my law partner, Mike Solomon. Mike, thanks for joining us. Fairly. Married couples get some special breaks under Medicaid. That's been the law. 
right? R right. But, yeah, as a single person, if you have to go uh, be covered by Medicaid, you basically have to be broke. You have to have no money, basically. A married couples get the special break you mentioned. They can, they can keep the house. The com if, if one spouse goes into the nursing home, the community spouse can keep a house. And half of the other assets up to $110,000. So the, the idea is so the, the community spouse won't be destitute. They won't be out of the house and, and broke. Well, uh, if we have a same-sex couple that have been living together uh, perhaps for, for many, many years, they need those same protections. Do they get them under Medicaid? Well, under Ohio, they don't get them. And in Ohio, if you have a same-sex couple, let's say that's been together a long time and, and one of the partners goes to the nursing home, and they own a house, they lose the house. The house has to be sold. They lose all of their money. They can't keep any money. So the community partner will have to survive on their own assets, won't have that house to live in, and possibly could have a financial ruin from the whole thing. Is the, is, is the law the same in every state? Uh, no. The, the federal government allows each state to set up their own rules regarding this. So as the federal government allows states to recognize same-sex uh, uh, you know, uh, couples for Medicaid purposes. Ohio doesn't. So in Ohio, a same-sex sex couple doesn't get the same protections as a married couple. But other states can provide those same sort of protections we just talked about. If people would like to see a change in Ohio's law, is there anything they can do about it? Well, you can either, the Ohio governor or the Ohio legislature would have to take some actions. And there's some telephone numbers you can call. I think they'll be on the screen. Uh, the uh, State House of are. Representatives is 614. 466-3357, the state senate, 614-466-4900, and the governor's uh, office is 614-466-3555. If they're interested in that, they should call and, and express their opinions. Good information today. Thank you, You're Mike. Welcome. Appreciate it. All right, the Medicaid rules are tough on married couples, but at least they offer some protections. Those same protections may be provided to same-sex partners, but so far, Ohio has chosen not to do so. If you would like to see the law changed, contact the governor or your state legislator. We'll be back. Call Butish, Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information. Or log on to www.butishandsolomon.com. Thanks for joining us today. Now remember, next week we move to 12.30 p.m. right after the noon news. It's football season. We'll be marking the 10th anniversary of 9-11 next week by hearing a survivor's personal story. Then, if you are what you eat, get ready to get healthier with our delicious tips. We'll list the ABCs of RMDs. Plus, we'll have the latest news on preventing prostate cancer and how to ensure you get those life insurance proceeds that you're entitled to. Until next week at 12.30, Please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. Would you like to join our kitchen conversation? All you have to do is call toll-free 1-877-765-1543 and leave us your question, name, and phone number. Or log on to www.golden.tv for all the latest information and show updates.